In this interview, I talked to Jessie. She's 26 years old. She lives in Queens, New York, and she's a live content creator for the MLB and freelance photographer. She has a background in arts and communications from Muhlenberg College. She is super quirky, and I'm so excited for you to meet her. Let's get started. Hello, Jesse. Thank you for wow. joining me today. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so I am super excited to chat with you because you have a really interesting background and where you're at in your career as a 20-something living in Queens, New York. Um, just to kind of reiterate, the reason that I am hosting this video YouTube podcast type of situation is because I think that there's a lot of pressure placed on teens today about figuring out their career paths and things like that. So I just kind of want to showcase how there are just, there's no way to predict uh, a path for yourself. There's opportunities that pop up that might interest you. And um, you're definitely someone who fits that billet in terms of kind of tackling whatever comes up and running with it. So if you could tell us a little bit about what you're currently up to and a little bit about your background, maybe where you went to college, what you studied, things like that. Sure. Um, so I just finished up a baseball season with Major League Baseball. I'm a live content creator for them. So I go to, this year was the Mets. I went to City Field every home game and photographed the action, the batting practice, and basically every element of the game. Um, so I just finished up that season, which is weird because it was a super short season and that right. doesn't happen like that. Usually it's usually it drags on and it's really long and you're really tired at the end of it. Mm -hmm. This time it was like, wow, blink, done. Um, but uh, other than that, I've been freelancing, doing some engagement photography. Um, a lot of couples are getting hitched these days. So why wait? Um, yeah, why wait? Uh, you know, so I've been doing that and uh, looking for the next, next thing, next project. Awesome. So I actually, I would love to dive into your work with the MLB just because that is such a cool thing to be able to say in conversation with people. How did you find yourself working for them? I applied on Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Get out there, kids. Shoot your shot because sometimes it works. Um, yeah, no, a, a thing like a little uh, job. Off, no, what's it called? Uh, I can't speak today. Um, little job <laughs> popped up on Indeed. It was live content creator for Major League Baseball one day. And I was like, I was working a photo editing job that I didn't really love. It was for Hollywood life, which is like all like gossip and like the Kardashians and like <laughs> as the and on. I know they're entertaining, but like they're in I was hot like, water right now for having a birthday bash. So oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything about them. Like really, I don't keep up. But I don't keep up with the Kardashians. Um, <laughs> ha, play on words. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I I worked for Hollywood Life for a year or so, just trying to dip my foot in the creative sphere in any way I could. So I saw this job pop up, and I was like, I'm just gonna apply to it. It's, live content creator job for major league baseball. I don't even know what it is. Um, next day I get an email from my current boss that said, Hey, we'd love to interview you for the Yankees. And I was like, what? <laughs> the <laughs> that's, Yankees. That's um, easy. Yeah. And then it kind of just went on from there and now I'm here. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so maybe could you talk a little bit about, um, your education in photography and the arts? Sure. So, I mean, I started out in painting and drawing, as you very well know, because <laughs> we did it together in, in middle school. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I started out with painting and drawing, and I went to college thinking that I would be a, a painter or an illustrator. Um, and I took courses that were mostly focused on those two. Um, art forms but then I just decided to take an intro to photo course I didn't really think anything of it I was like I just want to try it out I have a camera um, might as well just give it a shot um, 
And I just picked it up and I loved it because I felt that I could sort of envision a composition in the same way that I would with drawing and painting, but, you know, just taking photos instead, but same sort of compositional sense could be translated. Mm -hmm. um, so after that, I started taking more and more photography courses at college, and then I concentrated in it for my thesis at the end of the year. That's so. really exciting. Um, did you have any, I guess, mentors uh, outside of school or any resources that you use to kind of refine your learning in that field? Yeah, I mean, in school, I had a professor that really, he was, he gave me the honest, tough truth, like when you needed it, he wasn't just like complimenting your work and saying everything was amazing. He would tell you exactly what was good, what wasn't good, um, what you could improve on. So he helped me out a lot. Um, and then there was this other photographer that I met in school that I took a class with. He was like an adjunct professor. And he um, got me a, an internship with this guy, Ed Kashi, who is an incredible, incredible photographer, contributes to Nat Geo. And um, he was amazing. And I interned with him. And that kind of just like made me want to do what he does one day. I still want to do what he does, which is photojournalism and traveling the world and, you know, yeah. telling stories like that. Um, so he is definitely a mentor. And so is my professor. That's awesome. Um, and now that you're, you kind of mentioned the realm of like what you want to do in the future, is there anything um, about your current position um, photographing sports that you want to see transform over time? And if so, how do you, how do you kind of see that unfolding? I know, again, there's really no way to avoid how the pandemic is altering how we, we live and function. So if any of that yeah. makes sense, go for it. <laughs> well, I think this year was unlike any year, obviously any season that I've ever worked, um, but not just because of the pandemic, but because of all the, all of the social justice movements that sort of trickled into the sports space. Um, and that never really happened before. Like we never really touched on things like voting or, you know, Black Lives Matter and things like that. It's just like, it never really trickled in as much as it did this year. And my job sort of became more photojournalistic because I wasn't just telling the story of the action in the game, but I was telling the story of these players that are just human beings just trying to exist in this crazy world. Um, but like, yeah, and it sort of just became more about the story of the world more than just the story of the sport. That's awesome. Um, and obviously uh, so timely with everything that's going on in the world. So do you feel like because social media is so prevalent in society and the news these days, you really can't avoid it. Do you think that there's more opportunity for you to be essentially like a citizen photojournalist? Definitely, um, definitely, and I think a bunch of people, a bunch of people even I know have have started to do that. They've you know gone to protests and they photographed protests and told that story. Um, just because there's so much happening in this world, you could even just go out today and just see how many people are wearing masks, how many people are not, and photograph that and make that a story. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot just going on in this world that you could just figure out, like, find a story in your own backyard. That's actually one of my mentor, Ed Cashy's saying. He was like, find, find, the, find the photograph in your own backyard. Find it, because um, it's there, so. Awesome, that's so cool. Um, I think, to switch gears a little bit, um, the, your title that we talked about is Creative Storyteller. Um, in essence, as we've been talking about, it's through photos primarily that you're doing that. Can you talk a little bit about the equipment that you started out using and maybe um, where that has gone as you have uh, progressed in your career? Because I'm sure people who are interested in maybe becoming professional photographers are intimidated by the different types of equipment and things like that if they just have like an iPhone or something. Yeah, I mean, I'm still intimidated. There's so much stuff out there. Um, I. 
I think I started out with a, a Rebel T3 <laughs> or okay. something, um, which most people start out with like a basic, you know, beginner camera like that. And then I started to sit in the photo well with like my Rebel T3 and my like 17 to like very short distance lens. And I was like, this is not cutting it. Um, so then like my first season, I like decided to get a 70 to 200, which was like the first telephoto lens I ever owned mm -hmm. um, was this kind of like a rinky dink 70 to 200 on the cheaper side, um, but it helped me get more of the action. Um, and then, you know, just year after year, I just started to accumulate more lenses that helped me capture the action and the, and the game. Um, and then now I have two camera bodies, um, the 5D Mark III and then the Canon R6. Um, still, like, there are so many people who have, like, three or four camera bodies and, like, six, seven, eight lenses. And I have, like four lenses, two camera bodies, but it's like, is that like it's a like an investment. Thing? Yeah, an what? investment. Is it like a status thing? Like the more you have, the more professional you are? Honestly, that's how it feels like sometimes it's when like you're just walking in. Status. Yeah, when you're walking in and you you have a camera backpack instead of like a big suitcase with like your gear and everyone's like, oh, she doesn't have wheels? Like... <laughs> She doesn't have wheels. She doesn't have the wheels. It's like, not today. I just upgraded to my camera backpack from my Patagonia backpack. So leave me alone. I'm moving on. Moving every step, every step of the way. Um. Uh, well, actually, that, that kind of leads me to want to ask you about what the, I guess, photographer community is like. I know it the arts in general can be so cutthroat so what has your experience been um <laughs> I know you're like how do, how do i phrase this kindly <laughs> it's not no i mean i i think when i first started in that space of it was first off just being a young 20 something female in a male dominated space I, it was very like daunting to mm -hmm. me, even though I have two older brothers and I've been around like dudes all my life, basically. Um, it's still like pretty daunting to just be around these like old man photographers who basically make up the majority of the space. But then, you know, uh, I was shy at first and then my New York came out and, and I started to talk with them and sort of joke around with them, kind of just I, I don't take them too seriously and they don't take me too seriously. We kind of just have like a joking vibe. Um, but like then that sort of joking vibe turned into more respect for what I do because before I don't think I got respect, but then each year I sort of gained more and more respect among the community of photographers. Like, oh, this girl's here to stay. Oh, this girl has, is assertive. She Woman. She's, no oh, this woman, this woman, <laughs> this woman is composed. She's, she's trying to be, you know, trying to do something with this confident. Uh, we accept the fact that she's here. And it took a while to like gain acceptance among these guys that have just these men that have been in the photography game for a long time doing this for 30 or 40 some odd years. Um, the way they talk. Um, <laughs> but um it took a while, but the community is very quirky. It's very, very competitive. They're all competitive with each other, with me, with themselves. Um, but at the end of the day, like no one's really, no one has a bad heart, I'd say. Awesome. Yeah, that's, it's really nice to hear how do you describe that because, um, you know, millennials and Gen Z have received this kind of stereotype that they're unwilling to stick with something if it's like not easy enough. And I just, I don't think that's true. Um, and clearly what you just said is, is evidence of that because you could have very easily been like, oh, people seem mean to me right now, but you really didn't get a chance to know them and they didn't get a chance to know you. So by, you know, sticking with it year after year, you really were able to develop those, um, that repertoire essentially. Um, so that's pretty cool here. <laughs> 
Yeah, it took a minute. It took a while. I cried a little bit <laughs> from here, from here, here and there. <laughs> I think, well, that's also important to note because like it, it's very easy to sugarcoat in like a very, in a short interview like this, it's easy to not sugarcoat, but not get into like the nitty gritty of those tough moments. Um, so we won't get into that, but just so the audience knows those, those moments exist and they can be tough, but they can also build character, I feel like. So I can. Yeah. Um, so something else I would like to discuss is, so geographically, obviously, you're located in New York. Do you feel like New York is the place to be if you want to be a photographer or a photojournalist? Or can you see yourself um, moving elsewhere? Or, you know, if people are located across the country who are doing this, um, do you feel like every place kind of has a similar opportunity or maybe not so much to get those big name type of career experiences? Um, I think, I don't think I see myself in New York forever. I think I've been in New York for, you know, the, my whole life basically. And except for college and like that one time when I went to Italy uh, for, uh, you know, abroad. But um, no, I don't see myself in New York forever. I don't think this is the one place to get every opportunity available. I think the West Coast has a lot of opportunities. I think um, some places even like down south, Midwest, like there's still opportunities like these, like cities like Atlanta or like, you know, like there are a bunch of cities out there that, that have opportunities. I, um, I think I'm grateful to have gotten like big opportunities here because I think I, I really do believe that if you could make it here, you could make it anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I know it's like a stupid cliche phrase, but I, it's true. Like you, you can make it here, you could go anywhere. <laughs> um, because you, you probably been through the brunt of New York grit and um, attitude. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, no, I see myself probably like maybe like West Coast area one day or just, you know, trying out something new just because, you know, there, 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 there definitely has to be opportunities, not just here. <laughs> yeah. I suppose um, if you could share a little bit of advice that you wish you had gotten or just in general that you would provide to someone who is looking to kind of dive into a similar career route as yourself. Okay. Um, I guess the advice is that there is no one way to do it. Um, like some people like myself, like you went to school and you concentrated in the arts and, um, but maybe you didn't go to film school. Maybe you didn't go to graduate school. Um, some people do go to grad school and some people are lawyers or accountants or stock, you know, brokers or investors that just decided to drop all of that and become photographers. And I've heard those stories and they're really good. Um, these people that have done that, like, I don't think that there's any one way to get to this goal of being, you know, a photographer, professional photographer. There's, there's no one way. Um, and you don't have to just like go to a fancy school to learn it. You, there's so many YouTube videos, YouTube tutorials out there that you could learn things from and different online classes. Um, so I wouldn't get discouraged that this person went to film school and you didn't this person went to art school and you didn't because that doesn't make them better than you it just makes them going to film school <laughs> well I don't think I could have come up with a better way to kind of wrap up this interview so thank you so much for your time um, for those who are watching I am going to link Jessie's portfolio website and social media in the description below definitely check her out and follow her she has phenomenal photography. Um, I don't know why I had to speak like that, but I did. Um, so yeah, thanks, Jesse. Thanks.